da, 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 da. Hey, hey, and welcome. I will show you your empires shortly. First, let's get everything on board. Here are the empires. There's not all of them yet in. And they will be in the community galaxy, but we'll go and play a little bit live for now. With another empire that interests me. Which is... Woo! The jellyfish here. The Sathurelian Bliss. The Sathurelian Bliss here. And why do you call me robot? I'm not a robot, robot, robot. <laughs> so let's get into this. Just have to close a couple of things. Yeah, I've seen it. It's pretty scary. I've looked at Twitter, but now let's go for something completely different. Stellaris Aquatics, right? Let's jump in. And uh, so this is the Sathurelian Bliss. They are living in real deep in Ocean World and they have that other civic, that other origin, Ocean Paradise. So for our Let's Play, we'll go with a dragon for this first test. We go for the Ocean Paradise. It's an old lesson in Sathirelian society that abundance and ease do not equal prosperity. The overindulgence and sloth of our forebears eventually gave rise to an ethos of irresponsible hedonism, a way to ensure a sustainable future while still getting the most out of life. After all, food tastes better after physical labor, and an occupied mind has less time to pine for what is lacking. The benefits of this ethos have since been readily apparent. With the clearer waters and mines afforded by our endeavors into space, life is that much sweeter. We've made great technological strides, and though it may often be taken for granted, all Sathurillians today retain their capacity for propulsion without smearing aids. Things are looking up. So, they're dictatorial. Let's hope no one gets to be dictatorial these days. Cheers, I had to imbibe some liquid because you know I'm a jellyfish and I have to drink a lot today. They're anglers. That's one of the new civics. Ocean worlds. On ocean worlds, the agricultural districts are uncapped. Uncapped. That's crazy. So on the wet on wet worlds in general, farmers are replaced by anglers and pearl divers. The anglers produce eight food, which is a lot, and two trade value, and the pearl divers produce three consumer goods and two trade value. It also adds the aquatic trade. Then they are also environmentalists, which has been improved. This society seeks to coexist in harmony with nature. Great care is taken to preserve the environment and limit consumerism where possible, while having enough consumer consumer goods. They're also xenophobe, so they're a little bit afraid of, of other aliens because they are so jelly, so yeah, they don't really look look that good. They're looking like they're planning something, right? So, they're xenophobe and fanatic pacifist, so which this means, what this means for the gameplay is that they will have tons of pop growth, the room to spread and the consumer goods to go for it. So they have a, a very good concept. The problem that we'll have to face is our home world is great, but there will be no two other habitable worlds that we get at the start. So that is something we will have to overcome, especially with being non-adaptive. So that is what we have to do. We might have to take a bit to overcome non-adaptive and slow learning. They are also fanatic pacifist, as you can see. Empire sprawl from pops goes down a further 30%, so we want to have a lot of pops. The stability is increased by 10, which is very good at the start, mostly. 
aquatic. This can be improved by the hydrocentric ascension perk later and will also give us less good effects for non-wet worlds. So the xenophobic thing will be there. The mermaids will come later, perfect alibi. But this is not the LP, this is basically I wanted for the preview, I wanted the prescripted empire, and I will give you the chance to. There's a Discord link in the description of the stream, and if you want to submit your own empire to join the community LP, there's still places open, and then we'll include that in another LP where we'll play the dragon. So, aquatic. So this, this effect will get, I think, doubled when Hydrocentric Ascension Perk comes into play. That is incredibly interesting. So, um, contrary to what Paradox said on the feature video, this doesn't give you an advantage on other wet world. It it gives you an advantage on um, only ocean worlds, and on non wet worlds you have a big disadvantage. Praise the jelly willow. Hi there, major. Yeah, jellyfishes, <laughs> jelly angler. So they they are sitting there and they have probably have they have these long tentacles like jellyfish have, and maybe they catch fish with these. So they have um, pearl divers and anglers. They don't have to dive much because they're in water anyways, right? They're conservationists as well, which combines well from the story of uh, environmentalist and they're docile. So their empire sprawl from pops goes down by 10% and even more here. So we can, we can fit so many pops, so many pops in our planets. And we'll have to do that because our habitability is down 10% for other worlds. <laughs> <laughs> and they're slow learners, so leader experience gain will be a little bit slow. So we'll have to take a bit to get longer lifespan and to overcome non-adaptive for other worlds. But we'll get a good head start with our ocean paradise. We'll make this a little bit a, a smaller galaxy. Still, we want the maximum number of fallen empires in there. We'll have Grand Admiral scaling off, so it's the highest vanilla difficulty. And... Oh, where's the Crisis Strength? Here's the Crisis Strength. Um, I'm a little bit struggling with, with 25 Crisis in new games, so we'll go for 10, 10 times the Crisis. 10 times, I'm pretty sure I can I can defeat if it comes to that. And uh, because it's like a, the wall, it's aquatic, <laughs> we'll go for a Spiral. <laughs> Crisis type will be random. Of course, we could go other things. Highest uh, possibility is, is unbidden. No, no, we'll we'll just we'll just test play the the prescripted empire. I'm interested how it how it works with that. Yeah, I mean it would be good. It would be good to take inwards perfection. Absolutely, but I, I just want to play it as is. I just want to, to test what they have in mind, because I've had a great experience with the Necroids prescripted empire. I just want to test out if this is as well thought out as, as there. Yeah, random is unbidden usually. But maybe maybe we're lucky and get something else. <laughs> so. I was have to drink a little bit in between because I have got my flu shot today and I'm a little bit feeling it in the throat. So, um, joy to those who possess the wisdom of acceptance. So goes a common proverb in Sathirelian society. The bounty of all of life is all around once one learns to appreciate it. In such waters long have we prospered, but our elders do not sense uh, the stagnation, they confuse our survival instincts with impatience. If we do not seek change, change will find us and we will be unprepared. We cannot be alone in this vast universe. To keep our home, some of us must resolve to leave it. Our descendants into the abyss have proven worthwhile. Unworldly wreckage, perilously retrieved, precipitated a torrent of technological breakthroughs. At last, we are ready to journey beyond our oceans. 
to explore, to see, to learn and to protect ourselves. Yeah, it's it's not about the about the meta and the strength of the prescripted empire. It's just about the experience. I mean, uh, it's okay to 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 go up up against Grand Admiral. It's just difficult to go up against twenty five crisis, and we'll see if that's possible. But so, what will we start with? Best to start with is probably research speed here. And then we'll have these things here, and we don't have this pre marked. So that would be a great choice. Society research would also be a great choice. Um, I would like to have a Unity head start, so we'll go for that. Then we'll have Anichesil, who's also maniacal. That's not bad at the start, let's see. Um, Zero-G refineries for mining station output is good, but for now we have most minerals from miners, so we'll go for that at the start. Science ship. Yes, we have an archaeologist. Someone wants to be an archaeologist? Please <laughs> give me the word. Give me the word. And you'll be this great jellyfish archaeologist. Or someone in the labs. That's also possible. Let's see. So we do not see any additional planets because if you start with the ocean world, that is an ocean paradise, it's basically like in the Gaia world. You don't get extra habitable planets. These are frozen worlds. But we'll have a planet size 30. And we have an ocean paradise. 15% more happiness, pop growth speed more, 10% more resources from jobs plus 5%. And as we can see here, we basically have like 130% uh, habitability on our home world. <laughs> or 120. You want to be a governor? Okay. Um, so... You're a resilient governor. We'll send you out. Mm. This could be something, right? I'll just swim around a bit. And we'll go for a standard start. Let me see. We have ice asteroids here. Something we, we might use later with a hydrocentric ascension perk to even increase that planet size. I don't know if it can be done with 30, but from the description, it should be able to be done. So we have a lot of ice asteroids here. And we'll find also more frozen worlds around. The clammy shawl we can think about doing the usual alloy trick getting a little bit more alloys out but mm, i think we can keep it i think i can we can keep it i i have something other in mind where we'll maybe need that and sometimes in the prescripted empires you also have early pirates so uh, you want to keep these around just like that so we are able to defend against pirates in our home system at least that, and in other systems quickly, if needs be, if needs be. So, everyone has something to do. Let's have a look at our economy too. We have 11 surplus of food, that's not bad. Usually you have a lot of food surplus. We have a lot of consumer goods surplus. That's, that's way too much, as you can see here. So, we have to think about what we do with that. So we could um, bring our artisans to be clerks. Would that be a good idea? Would give us more trade income for the start. That could be that could be a good idea. But we cannot make them able to like dive down here. So we just have to live with that for the moment. And we might use the consumer goods for some bonuses here as soon as they are able to get that. And as soon as it makes sense. Here we go. Let's begin. Let's dive into the into the depths. And I think one more science ship is also good. Let's have a look at our ruler. So we have the agenda, a new generation with which gives us pop growth speed and happiness, which is a very good start. 
Fertility Preacher, Extra Pop Growth Speed is good. And also Expansionist. <laughs> it's like this is a setup, right? Outpost build cost and Starbase influence cost goes down. Wow, that's that's just a really a really good start. I mean we could get something very useless, but this time it's a really good start. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you're right. We could use that with, with research. So as soon as we have enough minerals, we, we don't have many plants to expand to anyways. So we can go for early research and use that for research. That's a great idea from you, Rob. I think I'll make you a scientist in the labs because you have something, if that's okay. So you'll be, you'll be the adaptable one here. Oh, uh, uh. <laughs> You're quickly, quickly adapting to the situation. That was just a that was just that was just a good idea. A good idea with a with a research. Now so let's get us moving mm. like into this into this position already while we wait for a little bit more and we might early expand our mines because we really don't have many minerals as soon as we can afford it <laughs> We'll see how that goes. The First League. We've recovered artifacts from an ancient alien civilization on Waskar 3A. If what we've learned from these artifacts is correct, this civilization was some sort of confederation that consisted of many different alien races. They called themselves the First League and appear to have coexisted in relative peace some two million years ago. Though the Waskar system lies in the region of space that seems to have made up the core of the territory, a partial map found among the artifacts, indicates that this first league may have covered a significant portion of our galaxy before its eventual collapse. Nice. <laughs> so let's see. Let's see what we have here. Oh my goodness me. Oh, what a tough choice. What a tough choice. I think... I think I want the spark of genius first. Spark of genius is just, I don't want to lose a spark of genius. So let's send the spark of genius in the labs for, for the research speed. And we'll get you in here. Wukuch cliff breaker. We grow ever stronger. Now, complete the construction of a mining station. Nice. Uh, now, cannot yet build anything else. Hmm. The question is if we should, and I think we should bring something to the table here. Come on, where is where is the other... Ah, oh, we, we only have another research thing here. Usually there's also an energy thing here. But okay, a little bit of research is also good, especially engineering is is just usually the best. And the administration on Rildi received the report on the alien remnants with some, some apprehension, of course, because they're xenophobes. And um, I think we we might have to do this. Even though it's a risky move, we'll go and empty our cobwebs. Mm, to build a little bit more science ships because we are having we're really short on alloys on minerals while we're very good with consumer goods so we need a little bit of alloys to maybe get more science ships going i don't really feel well with that though so we might do that later so we, we might go for the usual empty covets trick but uh, first contact protocols. So we cannot greet the Xeno with open arms. And uh, we cannot set it aggressive because we're pacifists. So it's wise to be cautious. It's our only choice. Here we go. Uh, 
Ah, we were getting the minerals going. There we go. And just to explore a bit. We found something. We found an arid world. <laughs> Yeah, that's gonna be a little bit too dry. We don't want to dry out on the shores of this arid world. <laughs> that's horrible habitability that you see here. Ten percent. That's just not not viable at all. So as soon as we can, we'll get some minerals going and um, go for some kind of research. Maybe we'll sell some consumer goods to get to this. We'll see. We'll see. So for now, it's just a couple of science ships at the start. Hey there, Mistra. <laughs> Hi there. We grow ever strong. Isolationist. Yeah, we could we could look at the policies. Let's see. Mm. Diplomatic stance is expansionist for now. Yeah, I mean it keeps keeps down the build cost. Isolationist would bring up the unity a bit, but I, I want to I want to see if there's something good to expand around here first. Where should we go? I mean, we'll just stay here with the construction ship for now. Let's get it to the to the middle of it. So we can save a little bit of upkeep cost. And what will we see? Hmm. A strategy with a little bit of science at the start is usually to go deep with science. So if there's an anomaly, we'll go for the anomaly. Ah, and now, and now. Let's go for the real roamers. I really, as long as we have these roamers, I want to give them science ships because they're really a big help in exploring the galaxy. So you'll go around here and you'll Go deeper into this direction and this guy will send probably out here after what he's done. Yeah, things are well, Mistra. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. I hope you're there well with you as well. So let's see if we can find something. See, we're playing these guys. Currently expansionist and fertility preachers, they are fanatic, pacifist and xenophobes. Now let's see, we have found an alpine world. So we're finding some worlds, just not just just not suitable settling worlds. Space charts updated. And this is really not a system you want to have. <laughs> We'll build one more explorer vessel though, um, when the time is right, and we I think we want to we want to start because we cannot expand much at the start. We want to go um, we want to go for science and exploration first. Yeah, I'm also a little bit tired. I got my flu shot today, so I'm a little bit I'm feeling the aches, but it's all it's all good. Sometimes. Aching, <laughs> strange thing. Aching helps me um, concentrate somehow. We found a wet world here. A tropical world here. Nice. Yeah, the deluge weapon. That would be well, that would be great as well. This tropical world is is really good, if it gets to be what it is. A size twenty one world. It's really, really nice. And look, look at this. <laughs> it has ice asteroids around it, which we can use with a new, with a new ascension perk. And I hope the new ascension perk that's called hydrocentric is hopefully tier zero. So we can right, right away get that thing and then use it for the tropical worlds.
So let's let's start with uh, looking around. Is there something? Is there something? I mean, adaptability would probably also go very well with us because it just ups the habitability. Well, I think I want to start with discovery for the for the reasons quoted. <laughs> yeah, Mister, exactly. <laughs> It's, it's, I think, never a mistake to start with Discovery. It's not the, the strongest start, but it's usually an interesting start. What have we here? The debris field, which T951 is part of royals and swirls under the influence and so, oh, under the influence of unknown forces. Let's have a look at this. An ice asteroid. Research that right away. Maybe it's it's some some strange old civilization. Who knows? Let's get another science ship in. Mm. So if we expand, it would be to Waskar and then to Esmiki. But we have to save up a lot of influence, and I think it would be good to first. Activate the map, the Stars Edict. I think we can do that a little bit easier. Uh, because we're, an M we're a dictatorship, so... I could be wrong. We have another Alpine world here, so... Around this, there will be no big help. Around here, we're relatively good. The surface noise. Yeah, because we had that great roamer here as well. He will not live that long, but Goshi Kelpmonger will also be sent out. Let's see. So we have them going here and then possibly this way. And then we'll send these guys over here. And I think there's something into these directions. We'll see how that works out. Let's just send them here. Hmm. So far I haven't seen if there's something new in the music. It could be a surprise, but I don't think it's it's there. No, no, it's not it's not there. Might come with something else. Encounter in Poru, the Alpha Menace. Interesting. Let's have a look. Real Deep is in uproar following the news of unidentified ships sighted in the void. Their intentions unknown, it would be prudent to assume the worst. It's absolutely worrying. There's the Alpha Menace. Where is the Alpha Menace? It has just shown, like just for a for a very brief moment. Big War Carify, get in there and tell us what you find. dive into that so there's no expansion plan already um, let's see if we can now go for edicts no need a little bit need a, just a little bit of influence but we haven't found any so far Sometimes you you find um, you find it through some quests or some some science projects. You find some influence, so you get a choice, and it's either influence or uh, research deeper. And we were kind of looking for influence, but we didn't find it for now. So we'll just have to wait a little bit until we can map the stars. That will increase our finding of anomalies further, and that will help make the game a little bit more exciting. Our Systems around here will find more specialties, so get something good there probably. And all in all, it's just a big help at the start. 
A challenging anomaly. Efforts to map the surface of this planet have identified a strange mountain range in the southern hemisphere. It does not appear to have formed naturally. So as we're coming near, I, I think I want one last science ship to send out. Habitable World Survey. Yeah, and, and there is it now, right? If we were a little bit... I think we have to take the inference, because inference is just so important at the start. We now know, without a doubt, that a thriving biosphere is not something unique to Real Deep. Both the scientific community and the public at large are eager to learn more about the various forms of alien life throughout the galaxy. Efforts to catalogue the life forms we encounter are already underway, but our excellent biologists have urged us to focus our planetary survey efforts on habitable, life-bearing worlds. No, we have more important matters. Habitable worlds and xenobiology is too... <laughs> it's too scary for us xenophobes. We cannot, we cannot have it. We cannot have it. And this means we can have... Map the stars, bringing the survey speed up by 25%. Anomaly Discovery Trans up by 10% and Ship Hyperlane Detection Range up by 1. And that's just quite good to get at the start. And okay, we did, didn't need that much influence at the start, but inference is just so good at the start that we want every bit that we can get. Just every little bit. And maybe even one more science ship now. And when that is done, now let's see, what are we missing? Yeah, just anything here. Mm. I think we could send someone into statecraft right now. So, it would be just great to get someone who could do that right away. And we'll send drop out. Here you are, and you're back. Welcome back, Major. I'll send you out into space. Good luck. Go and explore these deep systems. Which new leaders do we have here? Mm. New world's expertise and this industry expertise will both be very good to have. So, Need to give them something to do, and we will. It's science ships for now. until we have learned more about our surroundings and then we'll invest the influence in expansions. Dum -bum -ba -da -da. A march, an imperial march. Yeah, not Goshi Badi what Goshi Bay Dweller is a little bit younger, so... It's this and... Into the labs you go. Hmm, hmm, hmm. I think we could could dive deeper into this direction, even though there are these strange and terrifying aliens. Something has happened. We've not been able to determine the origin of the mysterious spacecraft we, ported in, uh, we spotted in the Peru system. <sighs> we dropped the communications again, right? Since this is likely our first contact with a previously unknown alien civilization, we must avoid any actions that could be misinterpreted as threatening or provocative. The language is translated. We can hopefully establish a peaceful relationship with them. Yeah, we want peace, but it will be hellishly difficult. They're, they're just so strange. And we are so so soft and tender. So yeah, now these these white white stars and the yellow stars, they have the highest possibility to find um, habitable planets around them. That's why I'd like to go for these white and yellows first. But the reds are also not bad. But then the blue ones and so on, they're not they're not that great to find habitable planets on. And of course you cannot find a habitable world near a pulsar. 
It's time to change something here. Mm. And it's what we have said we would do because we need a use for these consumer goods. Meaning we'll go research labs. <laughs> Signs of activity by an ancient precursor civilization on this asteroid. Yes, you're welcome to do to research that already. One day, one day, one day we'll do it. Don't count your planets. Our scientists have discovered something rather monstrous. The mountain range they scanned earlier was actual in actuality the outer membrane of a gigantic egg. It's uncertain what behemoth could lay such an egg and what horror could uh, would hatch from it. So, <laughs> should we study it from afar or crack it open? This is something I, I leave to you. So, we can study it from afar, which adds a bonus. And it's pretty close. Or we could crack it open. What would you like to see? That is a decision with consequences, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> could screw us over, or it, it could be something fantastic. I mean, from the gameplay, we're very likely to get to this system and to claim it as our system. And if we study this from afar, it would be very advantageous for us to have plus four in Tropalium 1. But if you want excitement without remorse, we'll crack the egg open. I'll just take a sip of tea and then look at the chat and see how we are condemned. Ah. Yeah, fate has spoken. <laughs> so, okay, it's it's two to one for crack it. But someone could turn the tide. It it could be a dragon. I'm not, like, I don't have all the events in my head. I usually tend to forget the events, even though I like them very much. They're always new to me. I'm like a goldfish there. <laughs> That's something I miss in the portraits. We should have, like, the goldfish in a glass. Eat it. <laughs> Eat the egg. <laughs> okay, so we'll crack it open. You have doomed us. You have doomed us forever. Research time, 720 days. So um, it's not ticking. So if we research that, it will need two years. So we can... We can wait a little bit, and I will wait a little bit, because otherwise we're really doomed. <laughs> so one day we might have a... we might crack the egg. I don't think it's a new one. I think I've... I know that this exists, but I, I don't think I've tried to crack the egg open. So I'm looking forward to that in a strange way. Wait. Ah. Yeah, there's three is missing. Okay. We'll get another one and then we'll stop the science ships and concentrate on expansions. Then we also have enough influence for expansions. Ah, come on. Give me that one. Where should we go further? Hmm. It's hard to tell, eh? I mean, we should go into the direction of the tropical world. And there's also Merrill nearby. So if we expand, we should expand to this terrible system here. Waskar. So we can access the tropical world and access this. For now, at least, it is the case. Oh, 
there's something in here. This looks like it's a menace. Ain't that the isn't that the the Necrid ships that <laughs> Necrids are usually not that friendly, but we'll see. Space charts updated. We're all not also not that friendly. Oh look at that! Meticulous! Oh goodness me! So now the meticulous one I want to have like uh very out of there as quickly as we can so yeah I think we'll replace that one with a meticulous one because then it's the systems close to us that we'll research with the meticulous one and the other ones will just go further out and the new science ship that just makes it faster we'll go into the direction of the other aliens so we can grab these things a little bit faster here we go Faster, faster, to boldly go. A new age of exploration is upon us. Survey speed plus 35%. Science ship disengage chance. That could be interesting soon. Increased by 50%. Here we go. To boldly go. We went boldly. Hey, we got a level. Let's see. So we're missing we're missing only, only some alloys. It's good. Good. What have we here? XO76 is a is home to a number of exquisite impact craters. However, something breaks the visual uniformity in one of the larger craters. Yeah, here you can see the craters. We will research that. Of course we'll research everything. Now, yeah, 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 two months. We can expand here and more importantly, expand to either Merrill or as Mickey. Uh, we, we might go there first. Because <laughs> the science ship's not yet ready. Mm, wait, you could help. You will help here. Here we go make this quick oh. the science ship of the flow class it might be a an aquatic necroid if it's the flow class alien drag racing Oh my goodness me. The crater on X076 exhibits long irregular marks imprinted into the relatively soft upper layers of the asteroid. Science officer Vulku Cliffbreaker has recovered some interesting unexpected wreckage from the edges of the depression. Wheeled vehicles, seemingly personal transports rather than research craft. Oh, it's from these dry people. The crew of the ATH Stellar Hook speculate that the crater may once have been used for sport with some alien species pitting their personal locomotion devices against each other in tests of mechanical strength or speed in near zero g but look at the research modifier wow six six really ah that will be a contested system i guess i mean there's already other aliens flying around here this might be really contested we'll see about that though <laughs> now you could build this Strategic resource out there. We'll have Zro. Zro is not that important early on, but it would still be nice to have. Of course, the, the juicy systems are here where we've Space met others. 
Uh, now we're getting into probably um, enemy territory. Strange alien territory. We'll see about that. So we're getting some more research here, as you can see, and um, I would like to have more alloys for a research ship, but I, I think we should keep, we should not like get rid of these corvettes right now. I, I don't, I have a bad feeling about that because we have now encountered other aliens, and I think it would be, would be just just useful to send them out here, maybe even with an admiral on board. Why not a trickster? Sander Freshwater. Aquatic wheels. Dimensional pocket. The ATH hydrophone never made it all the way to T951 to study the anomalies surrounding it. The ship, along with science officer Big Bob Pimp and crew, blinked out of existence as it was navigating the debris field and then reappeared minutes later. Big Bob Pimp reports that they found themselves briefly in some extra dimensional space. External viewports reveal that they were surrounded by countless ships of alien design, suspended in a seemingly endless void. Before the crew could get their bearings, the vision abruptly faded and they found themselves back in regular space. However, roughly half of the crew are missing. Science officer Big Bo Pulm speculates that they may have been selectively trapped by some unknowable mechanism in that strange space. What? Goodness me, it's dangerous! Is this this tropical world? Um, as you can see, it's kind of a rough ride there. But it would be viable to settle there. Aquatic wheels. I mean, they could have maybe had, I don't know, submarine races? I don't know, on an asteroid. Not Dimensional Drift. The missing members of the ATH Hydrophone's crew thought lost to the Dimensional Rift have reappeared. They hailed us from aboard an unknown vessel, not entirely dissimilar to our own science ships. Idling close with the ATH Hydrophone originally experienced the Dimensional Disturbance. They claimed to remember nothing of their time outside of our dimension aside from a vague awareness of having been away for some time. They wish for nothing but to return to service under science officer Big Bob Fulms and intend to surrender their ship to the authorities. Hmm. Very well, we must save our people. Uh, you will not get your original officer though. But we have someone else, the Bounty Riser. The Bounty Riser. Or did we now have someone else who was no? No. Survey that system. Where have we? Someone of our. Ah, now we have two ships here. Ah, no, we have three ships in this. My goodness me. What's going on there? Oh, well, we'll sort it out once they're finished with that. We grow ever stronger. Yay! First expansion. Now let's let's also see what we can get here, right? So we have a lot of people in just in jobs, and I think we should we should get more. Hmm. We should get more alloys as well. Turning minerals into alloys. Yeah, we have a shortage of minerals, but. We also need a lot of alloys for maybe a colony ship. Ha. On the other hand, we could turn into more research. <laughs> the alloys will really be a shortage. Yeah, we don't need to produce consumer goods here. We'll we have the pearl divers for that. So we can go alloy foundries. It's a little bit risky, but I think we should do it. And we can buy some minerals at the start. That's okay. 
So you're here with no orders. You'll go deeper. Go deeper, deeper, deeper. The bounty riser. Once we find a new anomaly, we might change that. Look at that. There we are. There is something already. It's a tundra world. So it's some icebound people. Would really like to make peace with our first ones. Uh, aha, we'll go cliff, cliff breaker here in the Ashiki system. Let's get the, the bounty riser up to that. And now we have him here with a skill to shorten the, the, the research time. A large amount of ship debris can be found in orbit around this moon, possibly the remnants of some kind of massive fleet action. So we'll go for that and... We'll uh, beam someone over here, right? Space charts updated. So after that, we want him to travel to Esmiki. So when, when will we crack that open? We'll crack the egg when we have a sizable fleet of around 10k. That might be a while. And we might not do it tonight. But maybe maybe another another stream. Somewhere in the next one to two weeks, I'm sure. <laughs> we grow ever stronger. So we're here. Let's just find out what we can do. Hmm. No orders for this. Let's just survey more. Let's just find out what we can before they close their borders to us. At least they don't seem like open enemies. So we might we might choose them as our first friends. Ah, oh, Tundra World. So that's one of their habitable worlds. Probably we'll see. You're going further. Anomalous space time continues. There's a significant ahead. amount of debris around the gas giant of Minchia. Four. Most of it appears to come from some long lost starships of various configurations. Oh, well, that's interesting. Yeah, we want to know about them. Maybe we can make something out of them. We'll need a lot for that, for that ship. Ooh! Incoming transmission, the Mathin progenitors. Sathirels, how delightful. We hadn't expected to encounter you for a few centuries yet. Personally, I thought you would wipe the yourselves out long before leaving your gravity well, but I am glad to be proven wrong. Greetings. Don't do anything. The news that we've encountered intelligent alien life for the first time has shaken our society to the core. Leaked footage of these bizarre creatures is spreading through media outlets across the Caesarelian bliss, and many citizens have been gripped by panic. Rioting has been reported in several cities on Rill Deep. The strange Xenos have achieved a level of technology far beyond our own, and they appear to have been spacefaring for thousands of years possibly even longer. Fortunately for us, they kind of appear to be a decrepit and stagnating species. Yeah, they are so decrepit. They are... <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, you know what? One of you... One of you guys here... Mm. Yeah, maybe you... You can just stop what you do. And just go go into into that other direction. Like, let's go here. 
And you? You can just survey the whole system. Intelligent. Yeah, we're the most smart species ever. Of course, we have. We are just in the flow. That makes us so superior. The flow. Space charts updated. Vietnam is fully upgraded. Nice. Hmm. Updated. I mean. So this is how it looks. Hmm. <laughs> Hmm, they're not translating our stuff either, or they would have, like, they would be ready right now. They might be also isolationists, or something like that. The debris field, the strong gravity well of Minchia 4, has pulled in a massive amount of space debris, which has formed a dense layer around uh, parts of the gas giant. Most of it appears to be wreckage from a series of space battles fought in the system several millennia ago. Scavengers have already scoured the debris of valuable technologies, but uh, a mining station... Oh, come on, a mining station out there? Yeah, it's not that bad. A mining sp sta station should be able to scrounge that, that material. Yeah, that's what we need to... Definitely need that. And in that direction lies prosperity. This is this is just a good, good stuff. Um, where are the progenitors? Have they claimed everything here? Can we cross their space or not? We cannot. They've closed borders to us, so it ends here. So we'll have to order these guys back. Just, just here. Let's just go over there. But I mean, we could have met fanatic xenophobes, so <laughs> there's that. The mining stations. And now we'll soon get more alloys, and then we'll quickly construct a ship. Routine and Nolion system. Backscattering spectrometry and sensors indicate the presence of valuable substances beneath Nolion 4's noxious clouds. Ooh. We'll learn more. And a natural wormhole in the Najar system. A rift that our scientists speculate may produce, uh, provide a conduit through subspace to another wormhole located somewhere else in our galaxy. It's here. And look, I think we may have found their home system. The home system of these mysterious creatures. They have a sizable fleet already. So, if we don't become friends to them, we are already finished. <laughs> the Alpha Menace. It has so far been in vain. Now, we have the choice to be cautious or to spy on them. And if we spy on them, and if they find out, they will probably find out then they will hate us. Now this thing is bugged, so we might choose wise to be cautious and still get the negative modifier. We'll just try though. They're isolationists, so that's kind of good. So you say to kill them, Major. Kill them all. Yeah, I mean, there's there's this slight, <laughs> slight thing that stops us, which is their fleet. Now ah, research complete. We get more research. Uh, we we get more minerals from miners, which is just what we need. And now we'll go for nanomechanics. Mm, powered exoskeletons would also help, but we'll go for nanomechanics for now, for more research because we've already built um, the research labs too. And grammar, yeah, the grammar. The stammer grammar. Signs of battle. There's clear evidence that the massive space battle took place in close orbit to Ashiki 2C. At some point in the last 5,000 years, the surface of one side of the moon is pockmarked with craters. From stray weapons blasts and scans from the ATH Stellar Hook picked up several hulks on the ground. Oh, they're in poor condition. 
Sons of His Bounty Riser is preparing an expedition to sift through these derelict hulls for valuable there technologies. Is new information in the situation log. That's exactly why you're here, man. We need to rise the bounty. Rock potential. Nolion 4. Okay, let me see. Nolion 4. It's here. We might never get access to this. It's a tundra world. It's exceptional rich in minerals. Minerals that are unfortunately of no use to us. However, science officer and a chisel believes the many elements in the crust of Nolion 4 can be transformed into potentially more useful forms through positron bombardment. Oh, that's interesting. Especially because we'll never get a colony there, probably. The 8 inch mineral <laughs> has requests that the Sathirial and Bliss send aside 100 energy credits for the purposes of this project. What? Uh, we'll try that. We'll try that. Maybe, maybe we can get some minerals out of it, right? We'll see. Look at that, we're getting more. And we'll soon... Um, yeah, let's speed that up a little bit. Let's see, we can buy 25. Which is exactly what we need for a colony ship. Uh, we can also readily send it here. It's only 50%, but we won't get much better here. Oh look, they have a new... What is that? It unblocks a tropical island. Oh. Yeah, of course. A jungle on a tropical island. That's tempting. Space charts updated. So, as projected, these systems will get to be quite good. And we'll try to claim them readily. Rock Potential. The crew of the ATH Mineral are pleased to report that the experiment was a success at a significant number of dense mineral veins on Nolion. Oh, I've been transmuted into usable resources. Just not right now. Okay, a gift to these strange creatures over there. <sighs> I thought we could maybe get some, some minerals there, but no. Not at all. And we have to go back because this is holy and forbidden territory. It's taboo. The Mathin have claimed it. The Fallen Empires are also a lot stronger now because they have access to traditions now which they did previously not have. Ah, wait. Now the Rob is the active I I want to get into real deep to assist research there because that's just the right thing for someone adaptable to assist research <laughs> hopefully that will get him maybe some specialty even because the probability is higher we grow ever stronger to get something special like a special trait it's way higher when you're out in space and even when you're assisting research <clears throat> so for now, um, the next best system, we'll have to go after that because all of these planets are useless to us. The next best system for us is Ferrae, and even if we don't come further from that, it's just worth to claim it. So let's get in there and let's hope that the Mathin progenitors will let us keep it. We'll have a lot of minerals. It might have throw later. Oh, ho, ho. And Chesil in the Nolion system again. Mm. Now we would have some someone else here, but we'll have to take her and maybe we'll find something in the Nolion system. An ancient precursor civilization. We have to get that as, as long as it is not... Um, claimed by the others because they might just send a call um a constructor there Project what we've just done. seen not so special now was it mm -hmm. the team and the science officer bounty riser has finished their expedition 
on Ashikatu and returned to the Stellar Hook. The wrecked starships were too badly damaged to recover any useful technologies. However, they were clearly advanced. We could gain valuable engineering insights uh, if we analyze the way. Okay, okay. Okay, no bounties to rise here. Well, at least we got some experience out of it. You live and you learn. You live and you learn. So very soon our colony ship will be coming. Um, when are we able to claim this? Mm, yeah, very soon. Because then we'll use the alloys for something else too. Space charts updated. Military expansion, that is. What? <laughs> Naja, okay, so that's the starting system of them. Let's see what we can later find out about them. I mean, they're isolationists, so that is good and bad. Good in that they wouldn't want our systems. Bad in we cannot be friends with them. Protect us. So we're boxed in basically between the isolationists and um, the progenitors so far. Discovery, research subsidies, research station output increased. Research from Starbase construction is increased. That's usually what I take. I might take this. Oh uh, no, let's let's just go for data bank uplinks. High capacity quantum bands. Dedicated to data bank transfers make possible virtually completely synchronous research operations across vast distances. Unlike Stellaris multiplayer. So let's get that going. And we have research speed plus 5%, organizational circuitry, re rerouting academic fervor. Let's see. Now, I think the best thing to take here, even if that is really good, we're still exploring so much, so we'll go automated exploration protocols for now. And just have a look if we have some computer guy here. No, no computer guy here. The genius will have to suffice. Technology secured. Yes. Planetary unification, ancient warring tribes, and so on. We must not, will not crumble. And uh, definitely not. So, pop growth speed is the next thing to choose, even if we have a bonus elsewhere. You'll be. Ah! We cannot remove her on the research mission. Oh well. Oh well, it will have to do. It will have to do. Ship ahead. sensors are picking up an unexplained pattern of interference in the Roxilana system. Get that going. Mr. Cliffbreaker. Uh, okay, they're researching, they're not... Rowan Streamer It's ready here. The Kuiper. Mm, yeah, the Arid World. The Arid World. A system has been charted. We grow ever stronger. Wait. <laughs> There's someone doing nothing. That cannot be done. Let's go to the Herantus Dust Clouds. Even though we we don't really like dust, it's dust is something something terribly dangerous. It's so dry and ah, I just hate dust. I'm gonna play this Empire today, and as a fade out for me, I'm going to play the LP with the Community Empires and get one episode in. So the idea for this is to bring you a large chunk of aquatics, show you the mechanics, and to have something to go to stream when I want to stream or when I have time to stream. And the community LP will be played later by me. I, I think I will have a half an hour to start that. 
and I can render that overnight. And I would have, I would have had to render it overnight anyways. So uh, there's no difference if I like play, <laughs> play now. You, you'll get the community LP probably one day later because I had something to do at, yeah, until the late evening today. So um, I decided to stream now. So you have something to see about aquatics and then um, tomorrow the let's play will start and possibly maybe this will be continued. With let's play I always go very intense and deep role play and name everything and things like that and here it's more into quick exploration and fun and interaction. And so um, I'll play the other thing but it it will be in, in the let's play like and then you'll see that other empire with a dragon tomorrow the start for that so we'll send big bo let's send big bo here Because I always like to try the pre-scripted empires because they always have very unique play styles. They're not necessarily optimized, of course, but they have just interesting play styles. Like that what Rob, Rob BC Active said, um, you can do a lot of research early on with that many consumer goods. And that's really a good idea. The From Beyond crew has succeeded in isolating a signal embedded within the unusual pattern of interference in the Roxelana system. The signal is a beautiful song, a complex sonification of an advanced mathematical equation to be precise. Oh, are these whales maybe? They're known for their songs. And one that science officer Wuku Cliffbreaker cannot seem to get out of their head. Who or what may have composed this song remains unknown, though its complexity infers an incredible level of technological sophistication regarding subspace harmonics. The signal's geodesics suggest a point of origin from outside of our galaxy. Yeah, that I mean that special <laughs> prototype thing always finds the out there events. Hmm. Even more. <laughs> Nah, I think we'll have we'll have to go for a city district right now to unlock a building slot or we might have to go for a little bit of mining. I'm unsure. I think we'll go first for mining and then now we'll first go for the city district to unlock something for more research. Let's go for that. Really, the Jelly Wobble song, yeah. Jelly Wobble song! Everyone chanting around there, wobbling back and forth. <laughs> A system has been charted. A system has been charted! Oh yeah, that's, that's very imperial. It's very watery. These things, can we finally speak to them? Just when I said it, communications established the Naj Najari Star Dynasty on we stream. Contacted by aliens. I speak on behalf of the Najari Star Dynasty and I have been authorized to bring you greetings. As long as you stay out of our internal affairs and treat our great leader High Queen Suna One with reverence, I see no reason for our diplomatic relations to sour. Peace be with you, Najari. We are very peaceful. Very peaceful. So these are the Najari. They are receptive. We'll instantly establish an embassy to learn more about them because you must know your enemies. And they're not independent. What have we here? Let's let's find out more about them. Why are they not independent? Do they have a scion? Yes, they have a scion. They're an enlightened monarchy. Erudite explorers. 
They're venerable, docile, slow breeders and repugnant. But who is there? I mean, they could be... They could be connected to technologists, not to authoritarians. They could be connected to the progenitors, or they could be connected uh, to some technologists. So they will not be... Yeah, it's not really going in a good way, so we're boxed in by these and these. And who knows what the what the science will tell them. A small cargo pod has been left to drift in space in the Chipollin system above the gas giant. It's been captured by the planet's gravity well. It will eventually be pulled into its atmosphere. We must find out. Hmm. So we have enough alloys now. We should definitely start... Um, we will bring them back. I think they will throw us out before we finish that. But who knows. Now these planets are useless for us, but we might have to have to stop them here. They could be aggressively expanding into our uh, direction. So as soon as we're ready here, or maybe even before that, yeah, I think maybe even before that, we'll build a construction ship and we'll secure that system so we can block them. They can have that Alpine world here, but not this arid world. And I think they should be happy with that because where were they now? I think we've seen earlier that they were on on these cold worlds, right? Tundra worlds and stuff. Uh, let's have a look at them. So they they are here. Yeah, they have a tundra preference. So they they wouldn't want um, they wouldn't want this arid world so intent. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, the other thing is that they have a scion, and the scion might give them a 5,000 fleet. And if they have a 5,000 fleet, who knows what they'll do? Which means... Which just means <laughs> we'll improve relations instantly with both of our people. <laughs> Because if they don't like us, we'll have a <laughs> we'll have an extremely big problem. Mm. A system has been charted. Nice. So we've had that. Ah, yeah. Of course. We'll need to wait now. Hmm. Got this. Ah. Uh, so you're here. Ah, uh, yeah. We we will get this. And we might just buy some resources, I'm not... We'll just sell a little bit of consumer goods and buy... Um, just buy some minerals so we can continue the production here. And just build that station here that will give us six minerals, which is just a very good... Oh, let's have a look at our, at our outpost. Look at that. <laughs> That's aquatic right here. That looks beautiful. And that's one of the mining stations here. Here you can see it a little bit more clearly. Maybe have a look at the ships too. Why were it? That's the research station. It looks different. Look at that. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. They're coming. They're coming. Oh gods. We have to hurry up or we will have to build something at Tathagat. Yep, 
Yeah, the Najari. They're already closing borders. I knew it. <laughs> I knew it. Now. Hurry up! <laughs> Hurry up! <laughs> so their science ship is coming. The constructors are not yet there. So we'll have to claim that system or we'll lose a lot. We'll have we we might have some some border difficulties, but they really don't um they're so far protective of us. Submit to our masters. They know what is best for young civilizations such as yours. Um, well, if we meet their masters, are they their masters? No, they are not their masters. So there's something else there, and there's there's no fanatic authoritarian fallen empire. So it must be researchers. Abandoned cargo pod. A discarded cargo pod was left by someone in the upper atmosphere of Chipolin too long ago. And this is one of the new events, now you have a big choice. It has somehow escaped the notice of other spacefarers and its decaying orbit means it would have been lost in the gas giant's crushing atmosphere within another few years. When the crew of the ATH Hydrophone unsealed the pod, they found a stash of alien jewelry made out of precious metals. We could melt them down for alloys, we could sell them, we could study their construction or we could keep them. Mm, we will not keep them. Study their construction is an option. Melting them down. Mm, what is the current price for alloys? <laughs> I think it's pretty well done here. So, mm. would we like to have alloys right now, or rather monies? We don't really need the research right now. Let me think about that. Hmm. Yeah, we can we can get energy any any time with our consumer goods stash. So we'll melt them down. Have a little bit more alloys to use in our expansion to this, because we'll not only have to build something here, but also here. Otherwise, they might fly over. And usually, the AI claims up to two in, uh, systems away. So. We need to claim these two so that they stop their expansion towards us. Even though these two are terrible systems, we might settle them later with robots. Or maybe with a, we cannot have a migration treaty with xenophobes. <laughs> we have discovered exotic gases in the clear water system. Trambodon here. Hmm. That's of course very nice to have. So we're first. First. We grow ever stronger. First. They've thrown us out too. <laughs> Let's guard this place. And they're coming in here. Let's see if we can finish that. I don't I don't think so, but should we already go here? I mean they're not constructing right now, so might have a chance. Construction ship here. Uh, we'll have to choose the next station, and this will be this one because we need minerals most. Science ship has been thrown out. Oh, yeah. There may be more to this desolate world of Chipola than meets the eye. Where's Chipolan? Here. Ah, oh, that's good. Oh, let's research. Anomalous space time continuum ahead. And the Raprix system. Far too stable for its presence to be a natural occurrence. Good, good, good. Land ho! The first Sather Road colony. Our colony ship has found a rare patch of open ground in the dry jungles of Eshmiki Prime and made planet fall. The landing site is surrounded on all sides by lush vegetation. And also some ponds, thankfully, and sentry drones have been deployed to guard against pred predators. The ship has been permanently converted into the administrative headquarters of the new settlement and its reactor core. 
is in the process of being removed so that it may serve as the colony's temporary power source. Hundreds of small, um, small aquariums and prefab shelters have sprung up around the former starship's massive hull as colonists begin to disembark in large numbers. The first Sethril city on an alien world, and we'll have to use, like, you know, um, some space suits still, filled with water, of course. We'll have to come to that. Constructing here, so we've got this, and then we can go for the last mining station as well. That is reserved too. Nice, nice, nice. <laughs> we grow ever stronger. Now, after doing this, also go and move here. We don't have to hurry that much. I hope, at least, <laughs> because they first have to um, research um, and survey Tathangat Tath first. I studied around Raprix 4A as such a perfectly stable orbit that it's easy to understand why our scientists thought it was placed there artificially, yet there are no conclusive indications of any propulsion systems or any other artificial marring. The only natural conclusion is that by some absurdly improbable chance, the asteroid got caught in Raprix 4A's gravity field. We have also detected some rare crystals on the surface of the asteroid. Cool. Cool for them. <laughs> yeah, let's get further out there. That's the main thing. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it's it's okay. Mining station then will go over there. Exactly what we need. What? You have nothing to do here? Cannot be. Hurry up. Nice. Uh, resources have been refunded. Yeah, I know. I know. Okay, okay. Let's enter here. Oh, yeah, a little bit of mineral shortage. But we're building more mines already. Our lookouts have detected an anomaly. In the Raprix system. Ah. Different origin than other bodies of this asteroid belt. Strange asteroid. We'll find out very soon about it. But here we go for another mining station. We grow ever stronger. We've had that. We can now instantly const. Uh, we need one more influence. Okay. Now come on. You'll go back home, and uh, we'll just get you some some reinforcements. Here we go. We'll need to stock up on, on ships now, or otherwise they'll try to invade us with their 5k fleet that they get from their friends. <laughs> Asteroid fossils. Fossils from what appears to have be, to be several species of aquatic animals have been found on the barren and airless surface of IL-956. There are indications that the surrounding asteroid belt was created from the remains of a shattered plant. And these findings seem to confirm that theory. Judging by the fossils, the planet supported life and was at least partially covered by water. Fascinating. And helpful. But Raprix is so far away. And volatile moats? Over here in Tremboden. That system. We need to get that. We've discovered a new the archaeological site too. Where, where, where have we done that? Too angled? Oh yeah, for the anglers right here in Valas. And that's something we could possibly reach. That's nice. A system has been charted. Now, so let me... Yeah, just one more corvettes. For now, we want 20 corvettes here. As soon as we can. 
And that should be okay then. Here we go. Already constructing here. All's nice so far. Weapon testing. It seems the apocalypse has come to Chipollin for a many times over. Surface scans reveal that the planet has been scorched, bombarded, seared and peppered in what is surely some of the most extensive weapon testing we've yet to encounter. Though countless attempts have been made to obliterate the planet entirely, it appears the aliens have not yet developed the technology for it. Science officer Big Boar Prilm has collected an assortment of broken weapon remains in the hopes of recreating their designs. Analyze the samples. In the situation log. We must know about the weaponry that led to this. Ancient weaponry. We grow ever stronger. I don't want to claim this system for obvious reasons. I want to get on the good side of these of these guys. Even though we don't really understand them, but they are very powerful and we fear them like a lot. We'll go to Merrill now and hope to expand there next time. Because it's just a very good system and we'll have access to Trambodon and then later Minchia, which is also an extremely good system. This has like eight resources plus two trade. And this has, wow. <laughs> Three exotic resources alone. And here in the Enkev system, a heavily armed vessel is in orbit of the asteroid. Would be wise to proceed with caution. Here we go. Get in there quickly. <sighs> Look at that. It will be taken from us. No. Last ditch effort with an Ajari. Could you like. We would open borders to you. So maybe you can let our researchers work there, right? That would be something nice. And uh, maybe. Yeah, we cannot close borders to them. We have alien lasers. We've learned much from analyzing the remains of the weapons found on Chipollon 4A. The recovered fragments were from a mounted directed energy weapon system that emits a highly focused energy ray that can be used with great results in space warfare. Science officer Big Boar Plum, Plum recommends we use our finds either by developing armor to counter the lasers or by recreating the weapons. Hmm. Karamo metal materials or blue lasers. Hmm. I mean, we're xenophobes and pacifists, so we're more defensive. So we'll probably say we need more armor for our ships. And rare crystals discovered as well. Whoa! Look at this. <laughs> These are some extremely good systems here. They're opening borders. Nice. <laughs> good, good. So we can continue researching the anomaly here. <laughs> that was all that we wanted. And thankfully, and thankfully they did it. Ever and maybe it will lead to more. Who knows? I mean, even they're, if they're isolationist, it's... Now they're building something on Poru. Yeah, they can have Poru. Secured. We are building... We're building fleets, but you know, they have a fleet here that has already 600 and it's pretty hard to blow someone up at Grand Admiral non-scaling at the start of the game. It's extremely hard. It's nearly impossible. So we'll not do that. And they'll probably get help because they're science. They'll probably get help from their friends, their science friends, and get a, usually that's a 5k fleet. So that's just totally out of our league. They are overwhelming because they get help. They've already built more fleets because they're isolationist. Nanomechanics. So we'll have to wait for quite a while until we can... Until we can stop them. So they have... Basically they have around 
40 times more fleets than we have and at least around 20 times more fleets than any other normal um, normal empire in the galaxy at this point. <laughs> so advanced instrumentation allows for the study and practical applications of physical systems. So we are getting more research, which is great. Uh, we could get mining subsidies going. That should be good. Mm, Karamo metal armor is of course also really nice. I think I want this first because we we just need these. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I will also, with my own fist, kill an elephant. With my own fist. I will run to the elephant and then kill the elephant, Major. That's how big my skill is. <laughs> mm. Or it might not work out and I might get a Darwin Award. There are awards for, for people who try that. <laughs> uh. I might try it at some point, but not right now. Maybe to end the stream. <laughs> we'll save the game and then attack them and then you can see. <laughs> then you can see how we are crushed uh, without, without anything. <laughs> Our lookouts have detected an anomaly. Oh, an anomaly. The colossal impact crater hints that something big collided with the surface of the moon of Merrill 5A once. Okay. Okay. Merrill. Merrill Christmas. Oh, what is that? Look at look at them. They're they're at 39%, really? That's crazy. That's also a precursor anomaly, I'm pretty sure of that. Here we go. Build a mining station. Nefri's Pride. The armed vessel discovered in orbit of J3L112 is an abandoned military spacecraft called Nefri's Pride. Its light frame and evasion hardware has suggested it was built for long distance patrol missions, but it has since been retrofitted in a long into a long range stealth bomber. Records of the ship's comms reveal it was hijacked by a rebel guerrilla on its way to perform a strike against a secret complex called the X Van Labs. Said to hold a weapon so powerful it would win them the war when they were shot down. We have extracted the ship's destination from its navigational drive. <gasps> <gasps> but we're pacifists, we have no need for such a weapon. <laughs> we're pacifists, we only want to defend. And of course, the influence is also kind of good right now, but really, would a fanatic pacifist go for such a weapon? Probably not. I doubt that we can even attack these guys later on, but we'll see. Maybe we can, <laughs> just for fun. <laughs> ah, yes, we can continue to research. Ooh, 77%, 77%. Good that we went in early there. Everyone has something to do, isn't it nice? FTL impact on Merrill 5A appears to be the result of a collision with a starship. From the size of the crater, we suspect that a ship exited a hyperlane at maximum velocity and rammed the moon for reasons unknown roughly 10,000 years ago. Let's see if we can see the crater. There, that's the crater. Here. The ATH Clear Waters has picked up residual subspace echoes near the crash site, reminiscent of a collapsed hyperparticulate field. But as the ship itself disintegrated on impact, the theory cannot be verified. It will still help us with our research, so that's good. So the next best system would be the Merrill system. A system has been charted. Chip pollen, nice. Let's see what we can get going there, there, there. A little bit afraid of the black hole at the moment. There might be something in here that wants to kill us. Often the case. Nice. Let's get to... Um, Trumbodum.
first contact with a bell. Oh god, no, no! <laughs> <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Is that? <laughs> oh, we have militant isolationists. Oh, they're fanatic xenophobes. Oh! <laughs> oh, I I try to remember if I've ever had such a bad starting position. Uh, I don't think so. Pitiful creatures. Know that we roamed the stars for eons before your hapless species mastered space flight. If any of your wretched little ships cross into our space, do not expect them to return. Peace be with you, Belmacosa. Oh god, no, 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 no. Is there no way out of this hellhole? Oh god. There's an arid world here that we'll never claim. Uh, <laughs> oh god. Yeah, that's the perfect... That's the perfect... These we can't have diplomacy with. These are fallen empires. Friendly though. And these are the fallen empires that are <laughs> fanatic xenophobes. I mean, they're akin to us. A little bit. But what will happen is probably they will... They will start a war in heaven and we will be crushed in their forces or something like that. <laughs> ah, no! <laughs> we have found something on Merrill though. Robot debris. The entire surface of this small asteroid is covered in robot debris, trapped in its weak gravity field. All of it appears military in nature. And there are enough combat droids here to outfit several armies, had they not been shattered beyond all repair. No! <laughs> uh. <laughs> and you and your science. And. And. Okay, so. These guys are science, but they are not affiliated with one of these. Thankfully, not with them. And this means around here, in our space, I mean, it could also be further out there, but there's some probability that the last fallen empire maybe lies here. <laughs> it maybe lies here. <laughs> so we're totally boxed in by fallen empires and a scion. Oh, great. <laughs> ah, science division. The number of science and medical officers has been increased throughout the fleet. Organized into a special science division. To support this corps of officers, new training programs have greatly accelerated the rate at which we commission new science officers. Yeah, you have come here to see me suffer, and you will. <laughs> you will. I feel dry now. I feel drying out. Like a jellyfish on an Australian... On an Australian beach. Lookouts have detected an anomaly. Challenging. Sensors indicate odd irregularities in Sojourn's energy emission pattern. A system has been charted. The Enkev system is ready. Nice. Sweet. Yeah, let's continue into the Haruntus dust clouds. Maybe we'll meet someone else. Someone with, you know, diplomacy. And they will, won't, they won't have diplomacy with us because they are too far away. That's how it will happen. To speak with us. Huh? Oh, they, they are. <laughs> they want us. They want mutual embassies now. Oh, thankfully, which means we could. I mean, we cannot go for this because they are not independent. They're receptive now. Can support their independence. Ha 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 ha. Now we can do that once we have a fleet. Of note. Mr. Wavemaker, you're there too. Good, good, good. Uh, we can we can build some um, some fleets. Maybe that's one too much. Here we go.
They're just recovering from the shock. Mm. Let's build more research labs, just as a consolation. Fish out of water. Made first contact with mysterious aliens in the ESCON system. For now, we've codenamed them Delta Menace, until we can find out more about them. They possess a language. We will find it. I mean, aliens, of course. We know that now. We've always suspected that aliens are terrible and a threat, and we've found it out. We're xenophobes, and we knew, we, we always knew it. But we'll make one last try, right? One last try. We have found something in Nolion 2, the Vropak homeworld. Nolion 3 was the homeworld of the avian Vropak, a species that was among the founding members of the ancient First League. These flightless bird analogues walked on long spindly legs and fossilized remains suggest that their females could reach heights up to 4 meters, while, while males were slightly smaller. All of their cities were built inside hollowed out mesas. So 4 meters, that's about 12 feet. Uh, scans? No, that's way more feet. What am I talking about? Um, is it? It's about... 14 feet. All of their cities were built inside hollowed out mesas. Scans indicate that some of these mesas were artificially constructed, presumably by the Vropics themselves, after they ran out of natural candidates to build new cities within. Peculiar. There is new information in the situation log. Yes! Find the Vropak homeworld. It is, it is underdeveloped, but we'll. We'll get to it. We are just having a very big shortage of minerals. I mean, we haven't we built more mining districts? No. Oh, then we'll then we'll buy more. <laughs> and one day Merrill will also be uh, charted. Nice. And then we can get more minerals from there. Here we go. Goshi Bay Dweller. Technology secured. We have you here. And let's get into into more research very soon. They're investigating. They have no orders for now. Okay. But they're far in, which means... Get you in here, and you'll go into that direction. Then we have a spaceship here. And needs to change direction somehow. You will also fly over here. That guy's still investigating. Okay. Genome mapping. So more pop growth speed. But mapping the genome of an individual helps them get healed better. So let's see what we can do next. We don't need the off-world trading company, also not the selective defoliants. Even though, I mean, we are we have a jungle planet now. Society research would be great. See if we can recruit. Nope. <laughs> nope. Nope. Um. Ah, they're on the research mission. Okay. Okay. So we'll wait until this is constructed, then we'll instantly construct here. And have even more minerals, so that will heal. That will heal them. How's Rob doing? Doing the work, but a slow learner, like everyone here. <laughs> Not now, but once we've constructed constructed this, it will be a lot cheaper, and then we can go for that. How are you doing? Yeah, they like us, but... Uh, it's not only about them. We grow ever stronger. Good, good, good. Let's build this, and we'll get the mining... Yeah. Get the mining going.
get the mining going. Technology secured. Automated exploration protocols. We finally have that. So we can explore the little bit of space here, you know, where, where you can actually go. And not find fallen empires in theory. Mm, we need more research. Let's go for more research. A special project is finished. The Ernie the Jellyfish I can see. I mean, I don't think I can rename rulers, but we'll see. Oh, we can now. Ernie the Jellyfish. Very earnest, serene protector. When the first league was at the zenith of its power, the Vropak were renowned as best scientists in the galaxy. Their research innovations drove the League's initial expansion phase, and more than one species was brought into the fold by promises of access to Vropak technology. Unfortunately, none of this technology remains to be found among the ruins of Nolion III today. We find First League artifacts and three minor artifacts. Nice. Uh, cannot, cannot survey here. Hmm. It's time to get you to the labs, maniac. Where are we now? And chisel and Blivit Wave Maker will go I don't know, here. Yes. Indeed, we'll do that. We'll do everything. Star patterns. The latest sensory readings from Sojun showed the star pulsating regularly. When the crew arrived on site, there was no evidence to support this data. Most of the crew were in agreement that the anomaly was caused by sensory malfunction. Science Officer Big Bo Plump discards this theory. Big Bo Plump claims to have discovered similar pulsating... Um, pulsating energy emission patterns elsewhere and now fears that something strange is happening to the galaxy's stars. They've charted the course to the nearest affected star. Mm. No, it was a malfunction. We need we need the inference right now. It's just we have to we have to go for that. It's interesting, but. We have to, we have to expand more. We just have to. <laughs> have to expand more. Now maybe we can see their fleets from here. It could be. Or from here then. We'll see. A system has been charted. Rambodon. Oh, that has been built. Nice. Okay. So, where do we have most minerals? Here. On Trambodon 6, a carbon world. With more minerals from jobs. Mm, whichever jobs that may be. We Big grow ever stronger. Establish the colony Ashmiki Prime in the Ashmiki system. Nice. Now it's it's the time to um, to buy some minerals or even more minerals. So sell some of our consumer goods and buy tons of minerals to give Ashmiki Prime a star that will help us. They have a little bit higher mining districts. Um, and we need mining districts right now, so we might just start with them. And we'll limit this to one colonist for now. Mm. 
let's also give them like the full program of building mining stations so we don't have to click everything. If we attack the sun in the night, we surely win. Of course. Of course, that's a great idea because at night the sun sleeps. At first glance, this planet does not seem capable of supporting living beings, but nevertheless, we've detected life signs emanating from somewhere beneath its frozen surface. We must know that because it might be relevant for us. It might really be relevant. Now note that we cannot claim any of these systems Our here because they anomaly. will say get lost. It might even be close with this one. I hope we can get Roxolana and then get out of here. Anomaly in Jinigan 6. Massive storms are visible in the upper atmosphere of this gas giant. It might be worth the effort to study them. Yes, let's do that. Let's do that. We can investigate, but not more. Not Space more. Space charts updated. Nice. Escond is fully surveyed. Here. Let's get further. Maybe we'll we'll find empires that are not like <laughs> impossible to get something done with. Hmm. And we can still crack the egg to destroy ourselves. We'll see about that. Oh, wait. There's someone doing nothing here. How could that be? You're here, no orders yet. You'll get in here. What have we found out? Space firing civilization. The Delta Menace. Although no significant planetary settlements have been detected, there is a larger star base orbiting the system's primary. Our ships have been instructed to conduct themselves with care and to avoid any actions which could be interpreted as hostile. If their language is translated, we can hopefully establish a peaceful relationship with them. Oh. We'll see how that works out. And now you can see, we cannot declare war on the Najari Star Dynasty for several reasons. I think one of them is that they are a scion, and so we would have to attack their master. And the other is that our war philosophy does not allow us to declare war against the Najari Star Dynasty, because we're fanatic pacifists. <laughs> so we might not even test that theory, but we have cool thoughts. We didn't detect life forms. Below the surface, we detected them in the entire world. The frozen planet is interspersed with micro-thin tubes, linked like a rudimentary computer. While the structure is primitive, its gigantic scale means it can probably rival some of Real Deep's supercomputers in output. Even now, the computer seems to be active. Our scientists can interface with it, but since it's so slow, we would only be able to ask it a single question. Can you solve these calculations? Who made you? Who came before us? What are we? Best to observe it from afar. Mm. Let's see. So Jun, we will never get this as long as these guys live. So best to observe it from afar is out. Research would be good, but I think I'm going to ask it what who came before us the first league artifacts recovered we just want to eat big lizard yeah oh hello 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 mathin greetings sathy reynolds as you no doubt know we mathin are dedicated to the study and conservation of all forms of life in the galaxy we have studied your species and determined that the cerulean bliss is unlikely to last for more than a few centuries at best. To ensure the continuation of the Sathirel species, should the worst befall your empire, we would like to acquire a part of your population for our endangered species preserve. 
It will construct a special reservation that perfectly mirrors the natural habitat of your species and its population will be well taken care of and protected from all harm, so you need not worry on their behalf. So what do you say? Will you contribute to our preserve and safeguard the future of your species? No, no! We are too afraid to give our population into alien hands. No, it's not another one, it's these guys, but they are starting with the demands now. Which these guys will too. <laughs> They're just displeased. I don't know what these guys will be. Extreme storms. Trinigan 6 frequently experiences massive and extremely violent storm systems in its atmosphere. Several dozen persistent storms are visible from orbit with winds often reaching speeds in excess of 700 meters per second. The cause of these storms is not immediately apparent as we have found nothing in the planet's climate model that would explain them. Our scientists are interested in studying its, this anomaly. Good, good, good. We'll never study this anomaly. You got your DCL pack, DLC pack. Hey there, Sun God. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. There's also a link to my affiliate partner, so I'll get 5% of the thing. And they have, they have Aquatics reduced to um, $750 or Euros, and in other countries it's available as well. A little bit cheaper uh, than, than Steam, even. So, if you're interested in that, if you're interested in buying that, consider that. And I'll <laughs> refinance some of Aquatic's cost <laughs> for me with that. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> no, it just it just certainly it certainly helps to get the channel going and to show new games from time to time. So let's see. Um hmm. Yeah. Let's get one more covet too. Our lookouts have detected an anomaly. Yeah, giving them pops is very good, but we're role playing this too, so. And would a xenophobe give them give them pops? I don't think so. They wouldn't go over there. It's just very unlikely. We're afraid. We're afraid of the universe, and we have we have reason to do so, to be so. I mean, plentiful reasons. Small rectangular object on the surface of this moon is deflecting all scanning beings like a mirror. Our sensors are unable to determine its material composition. Oh no! It's research. Mm, let's also get something going in here. Ah, look, we have less anglers, but we should have more researchers now. Where are our researchers by? Ah, here. Okay, nice. We should get even more researchers, you know. So let's build another city district. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fine to wait. <laughs> Coronavirus has destroyed all budgets around the world. Not all, but some budgets, certainly. Our lookouts have detected an anomaly. There are signs of activity by an ancient precursor civilization. You need not say more. We want to know. We want to know. Hmm. Anomalous space-time continuum ahead. Ah, more life signs here. And yeah, so I'll save that now here, and then we'll we'll do something to uh, end this stream on a high note and crack open the egg. <laughs> we'll just continue to play a bit and see what comes out of the egg, right? I suspect it's something dragon-like, and we'll see. Ah, look, the Serene Protector has developed new skills. Eye for talent, leader experience gain. Oh, thankfully. Thankfully. And leader level cap. That will help us so much. So we'll crack open the egg together, and then we'll see what becomes of that. <laughs> 
Alien Mural while conducting surface scans of Jinigan 6A, signs of his own streamer, and the crew of the ATH Fathometer discovered what appears to be an artificially carved slab of rock covered in alien writing. They have not detected any other signs of alien activity on the moon, and exactly how this mural came to be here is a mystery. We've prepared a special project to translate the text. Yeah, well, let's do that then. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> oh god. It it sounds pretty big. Space charts updated. <laughs> Hmm. Let's get deeper into the into space. In this direction as well. They're still building fine, so we can expand the fleet. The clammy shoal. Research going up, and we'll build more research here even. For the mining station. That is also coming towards us. Crystal growths, the life forms living on B134997 were nothing like we expected. Our scientists report back the Astorator's crystal growths. These growths have turned out to be self-sustaining and caused by the crystals taking in the ambient radiation of this Kida and combining it with the mineral composition of the asteroid. The crystals themselves are primarily made out of sucrose and could potentially even be edible. Edible, you say? <laughs> yeah, we have enough edibility. We're curious, rather. Mm. Well, let's see where we can get to with this. We grow ever stronger. Now, um, we're now investigating somewhere out there. No, we're still investigating this. Okay. okay. Once we're finished, we'll probably go to the archaeological site with them. We'll see. Finish the stations. Now we need to go to Minchia. And build an outpost there. Hmm. Even the dollar. Faction. We have a faction. The Defensive Readiness Group, led by Robbie C. Active. Nice. <laughs> And, oh, we have another one, the Peaceful Advancement Foundation. So we have, we have the ones for our, um, for our species. Fanatic Pacifist, keep the peace, non-violence, it's good. And the Defensive Readiness Group, we need a non-aggression pact, which we're not going to get. Extended peace, isolationist diplomacy. Having any other stance angers them. Yeah, 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 but we still want to know. I don't know yet how much we can increase the size of the planet, but we will be able to try that later because we have a lot of ice asteroids around our home world. So if it's stream next time or the time after that, day after that, then we'll probably be able to one day use the lot of ice asteroids over there and each ice asteroid should increase the size by one if i remember right and then hmm that will be pretty nice oh we're we're also in a in a nebula here that blocks everything so we could have isolated easily right how is that called the double I don't know. 
double something expands. We're starting in a nebula. <laughs> I mean, it's foggy. It's foggy where a lot of water is, right? <laughs> We're cracking open the egg. We're at twelve percent. Project done. Not so special now. Science officer Rowan Streamer has managed to partially translate the alien mural discovered on Jinnigan 6A. It is a memorial for an extinct alien race that once maintained a small interstellar empire in this region of the galaxy. They were apparently exterminated by the creators of the mural, a fact that they seem to regret. Given that the mural has been dated to being in excess of three hundred million years old. It's likely that its creators are also extinct by now. Perhaps most interesting of all is that the material of the mural was made of despite its age. Was made of despite its age. It's in remarkably good condition. And this gives us engineering research and a level up for Rowan Streamer. In, we're absolutely interested in researching more. Yeah, an ecumenopolis, but I've also seen Space uh, Shenra trying the ecumenopolis and the ecumenopolis, yesterday at least, they might have changed that now for the patch, was somehow a dry system. So his aquatics were just drying up in the ecumenopolis. <laughs> I hope that is fixed. <laughs> I really hope. Look at that. Adonir. What? What is that even? Why have they a thousand ships not combined? Look at that. Look at this. What is this? Ooh. What? Okay. This seems strange to me. I don't know what you think of that, but I... I think this is strange. Let's get into that further. Yeah, there's these ships, but they're all single ships we can look at them right now they seem to have advanced ships and smaller ships already so they might have destroyers already but look at that that's weird <laughs> that's really weird mm. grow ever stronger ever stronger Yeah, we're also following up here to Minchia. As soon as we can. Why Anakin would buy Aquatic DLC before buying Stellaris. Indeed, indeed. Stellaris sometimes has been free now, so I'll I'll try. Um, I think one day Stellaris was free for a short time on a shop. I'm, I don't remember where. If this happens again, I'll be Our sure to post that. An We're receiving a weak signal from the surface of the planet Jinnigan 4. The source appears to be some kind of tracking beacon. Yeah, more, 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 more. Mm. Yeah, they're still investigating. Space charts updated. How is the egg going? <laughs> 30%. Here. Significant scarring on the surface of this world of Univ 6. A pattern that cannot be natural from orbit. The massive rock rifts look almost like writing. The Great Khan. It may be. The cruelty of the Delta. What? Our explorers knew first contact to be a dangerous affair. But none could have predicted just how true this would be. In a violent assault, the Delta Menace seized our vessel landing a boarding party before emergency FTL could be engaged. Despite our crew's valiant efforts, the attackers, a mammalian alien species, were able to overwhelm our defenses. Perhaps fortunately, both for them and the sake of keeping information from enemy hands, our crew took their own lives rather than permit themselves to be captured. However, we must assume that our assailants will soon find out much about us by studying our vessel, and that hostilities are inevitable when faced with a civilization that would act in such a manner. Bounty Riser, no! Uh... Death. Death. 
So we have science, we have a fallen empire, we have a fallen empire, and we have a deadly empire. Sweet. Now, after you've finished that, please return home. We cannot get out there. It's way too dangerous. An ancient survey marker on Drilligan 4. It appears to be an ancient survey marker placed here years ago to mark a large deposit of precious metals. Okay. Okay, not that we'll ever get it. We'll get it when it's uh, not important anymore. <laughs> but it's always nice to find something out there. Still, something has happened. Elusive aliens. The Delta Manus. Yeah, we will not hack into them. Because we're still fanatic pacifists. Look at them. Their horns already already say we want to fight everyone. Look at this. It's a menace. It's so alien. And they are looking so dangerous. So hard. You can see it from their armor. And their horns. They are hard and terrifying. Not soft and and joyful like we are. Yeah, we should just cleanse. Yeah, we should just do that. Let's just do that. Right, okay. I'll I'll start right now. Build one more covid. We'll now cleanse the galaxy. <laughs> uh, we might need robots. I'm just saying that. <laughs> Someone used a mining laser from orbit approximately 5,000 years ago to carve a large body of writing into the surface of Uni UNIF-6. The massive script covers a large portion of the planet's upper hemisphere. It appears to be a short story chronicling the difficult life of an alien mercenary. Fascinating. UNIF, oh, we want, to, we want that. What a system that is. Two's row and all kinds of things there. That looks so tempting. First, we have to get through Roxelana and Valas to get to the real things. We grow ever stronger. And now, so one of you guys build something here. We might build something in Tropolum, but first the, the egg will get cracked, right? And you, mm, I think we'll we'll start Roxelana. No other way. Just have to go. Keep going into that direction. Our lookouts have detected an anomaly. Scans indicate the presence of a foreign alien-made object on one of Venus Six's many frozen mountain tops. Research that. Oh yeah, look at them. Ooh, I'm, ooh, I'm freezing right now. It's just very, very cold. And you? H2. Defensive readiness group. Is there anything I can do? Not really. Could go isolationist. That's the only thing. But we have not given up hope that out there maybe maybe there's someone we can bond with. Also for our um, for our pacifist things. Mushroom picking. A routine ecological study of our colony of Eshimiki Prime has stumbled upon a strange fungal life form. Oh, great, more aliens. No! The science team reports that the surface of the mycelium is shimmering and colorful, but what was most intriguing to them was the fact that separate clusters were seemingly communicating with one another whenever something occurred within a wide radius. Furthermore, the biology of the organism appears to be clearly alien to the ecosystem of the colony. Puzzled, the local science team has requested specialized support as we might be dealing with a sentient species. They're aliens, we must dispose of them. Dispose of them. It's too dangerous. We have learned that aliens are dangerous, so get rid of them. My goodness me. Intellectual booty. And we can go for more mining. And we'll do that. Mining station output plus ten percent. Seems like a very fitting choice. Aliens are dangerous. They are incredibly dangerous. 
Look at the look at the enemy. A whiff of something. The From Beyond has recovered an elongated metal box from the surface of Banus 6. Clusters of small perforations on five sides lead. Science officer Wika Cliffbreaker to believe it's not a container, but some sort of aerosol dispersal device. Initial tests seem to confirm their suspicions, as trace aromatics still emanate from the object. A special project has been issued to confirm whether this might be an information carrying device constructed by some alien race communicating primarily through the secretion and reception of atmosphere borne chemical compounds. Smells. Situations amended. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, we cannot take the risk. Not in our own, ho own homes. That's. It's unheard of. It's unheard of. Mm. Cannot afford a city district either. <laughs> we just need more minerals. We'll get them from Manchin. But we're on a, in a, a like on a good way. Charted. A good way, definitely. Project done. A whiff of something. Special the box is indeed a document of a sort. Science officer Wojko Cliff Cliffbreaker admits that they have been hoping for a historical record of some other kind of codex significant to whatever culture left it behind, but. They were disappointed. The true nature of the aromatic box seems to be a collection of fairly short narratives, which, going to the rapid, by the rapid changes in order towards the end of each sequence, are intended to surprise or be interpreted as comedic. Ah, oh, space farts. The techniques used to store and reproduce specific smells is of some interest. The tales it tells are not. The crew the from beyond are left with the uncomfortable feeling that they have unwillingly become intimately familiar what certain gauges byproducts of alien digestion smell like. However, Wilco Griffbreaker is unwilling to speculate as to why the box was dumped on this frozen hellscape of a planet. Alien mischief, of course. What other things could it be? Mocking us. Mocking us. We must hide until we are strong enough. Constructing something here? Yeah, again, 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 of course. Are we cracking that egg? Who knows what's in there? We must know. We grow ever stronger. I mean, it might crack itself open and that might be dangerous, so we must know now. The most important one is there. Dangerous food? Yeah, it might be. It might Research be. Complete. Polytechnic education. Leader experience gain increased by 25%. That counteracts our slow learning. Hey, Joji. Hello there. Yeah, um, tomorrow I'll make do to um, get the to get the Let's Play out. So there will also be a Let's Play episode. And there we'll have the dragon. Here we started with the Ocean Paradise world. It's nice to see you, Joji. And remember, you can still submit an empire just at this moment, just after this stream. I'll add the last empires and then start the Let's Play. And to come down, we'll record an episode that will be out tomorrow, hopefully. So I'll cut and everything and it can render the night so it can be out tomorrow. <laughs> That's the planning. <laughs> Polytechnic education. In this age of increasingly advanced technology, a basic education in polytechnics and applied science will benefit all of our citizens. They must learn about the dangerous aliens. That's what they should learn. And here we have more biodiversity studies. The different forms of life. Yeah, the dangerous forms of life. Uh, and what next? Eco simulation seems kind of useful. Food from farmers and anglers. Food from Starbase constructions. We could also go gene clinics because we have tons of consumer goods from the from the anglers and so on. I think that's the better choice. Let's go for that. And this is also the best choice we have. Here we go. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> I would really like to see what you can what you can bring there. There's always so much creativity in there. Mm. From all the people that send me empires, from all the people that somehow contribute. 
And that's just... It's just so nice. I'm really looking forward to that. Hmm. What are we doing with the alloys? Hmm. I mean, we can expand further. I, I think I want to avoid that because I don't... I want to stay away as as far away from the Belmacosa shard. Not worth risking that for like a couple of energy credits. Space charts updated. Sweet. So build the next outpost here. Hmm. Hello there, cracking the egg. With that, and let's improve the fleet. And we have the science ship here. There's still something out there in the nothingness of the space. And what is that? Is that an isolated thing? We'll see. We'll see shortly. We grow ever stronger. Ever stronger. Hmm. I think I'll stay here, just in case we can settle something there. But on the other hand, we want to get into that direction, right? So let's move over here with the Constructor. Should be kind of okay. Hmm. There's everything okay here, so... Um, let's get into even more research, you know? <laughs> Why not go for some extremes? A special project is finished. A special project? In Tropolum, we've cracked the egg. The insides of Tropolum 1 were not what we expected. Instead of some infant titanic life form we've simply uncovered genetic slop the entire planet is filled with genetic material and resources what all this material would have become is unclear but our galaxy is probably safer not knowing oh my goodness me we gained tons of research and eight to tropalium what what is that eight eight research Maybe we'll just claim that. I mean, eight research, that's just something. That's just something big. And four and three, that's pretty good. Yeah, you'll just move here. You'll just, you'll just instantly build that. It's fine. It's fine. Ha <laughs> <sighs> <sighs> Mm, that one is on the research mission, and we'll send Rob back to his jolly planet. Where he can do his job and assist research. The lot of research that we are gonna get. Leak science baits. A surface scan of Sojun 2A that identified the remnants of an ancient installation on the moon's surface. Most of the facility was wiped out in a massive explosion some two million years ago. A few outlying buildings more or less survived the blast. All evidence recovered so far points toward this having been some sort of research base by, built there by the First League. The nice. Nice. Get in there. Get in there. Yeah, the events look more diverse now. They've done that. They have looked into the events a little bit more. And I applaud that. There should be... Also some random different outcomes maybe, but the main thing is that you have a choice, right? My choice to, for, for today, but this will be continued, is to end the stream for today. It has been a good time. We have cracked open the egg. We have not been destroyed by it, thankfully. So, let's save this here. We're not in a terrible position. From what we're doing on our own, we're in, in a terrible position diplomatically. <laughs> but it's... It might become interesting. Maybe at some point we'll become a protectorate of these guys. 
You never know. <laughs> that might become a very funny playthrough. So thank you for watching and being here. Um, if you want to stay in contact, please subscribe. And there's also a Discord link in the description that should work to get into our comfy little Discord. And uh, have a great time until next time and happy gaming. This is Immanuel Kahn signing out. See you soon and happy gaming. We'll be back next time. Under the seas. <laughs>